Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Gaming with Glare. Uh, today we're going to feature a pretty broken combo deck that's enabled by Kalthos Sunstrider, uh, which was recently reverted back to what it was at the very beginning, about two years ago. Um, so it was 7 mana for a while. They, they nerfed it to 7 mana and uh, deal, or rather reduce every third spell you cast each turn to 0. Uh, and then they eventually made it so that every third spell cost one, if I'm not mistaken. And now it's been reverted all the way back to what it initially was on release um, in in the set it was released in, which is that every third spell you cast each turn costs zero. Uh, so it's a six mana four seven. It's the core of the deck. Uh, you have to get him, you have to get to mana six to uh, to cast him, but you can cheat him out with Barnes. Uh, which summons a 1-1 one, one copy of a random minion in your deck. So as long as you haven't drawn Kalthos, Barnes gives you the turn uh, mana 5, 1-1 uh, one, one copy of Kalthos. So you either go in with Kalthos or Barnes and a ton of cheap uh, mana gain with Innervate and Lightning Bloom, plus you have Moonfire and Pounce uh, that act to give a little bit of extra damage and cost nothing. So that activates the Kalthos. We have 8 zero drops. Um, you run Biology Project to ramp up to Kalthos and Barnes. Um, I'm testing Claw. I think it's pretty good, but I haven't played any games with this exact list. Uh, but Claw seems like a good inclusion. Um, Capture Cold Tooth Mine draws the lowest cost or the highest cost card from your deck. So you're either getting fuel for the Kalthos or you're getting a UI to, to bop your opponent and win the game. Um... Iron Bark is free when you have seven mana crystals. Solar Eclipse doubles the, the uh, next spell you cast that turn. Bog Beam is free on seven mana. Swipe deals four damage to one enemy and one to all other enemies. We've already talked about Barnes, and we have Nourish, uh, which has been reverted back to five mana, and either gains you two mana crystals or you draw three cards. We talked about Kalthos already, and then you have Starfire, which deals 5 damage and draws a card. Now, it looks like that costs 6, but because you're cycling with Kalthos, it ends up usually costing 0. Uh, and the same with UI. So this deck is a pretty broken combo deck. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that you have to draw Barnes and Kalthos, I think it would be the best deck in the game. I don't think there's a more efficient way than what I have here to... To tutor the Kalthos. I think Barnes is the way to go. Um, by the way, there's a turn one lethal you can do. If you get double lightning bloom uh, into Barnes on the on the play, you don't even have to have a coin. If you get double lightning bloom into Barnes, into Kalthos, into UI, into more zero cost stuff, into dump the whole deck, you can have a turn one OTK. Um, I haven't done it yet, but it's possible, so that's fun. Anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm going to end this introduction to the video, and we're going to hop in to play a couple of games. Hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys, um, so I'm queuing in to a game with the direct, uh, sorry, the Kael'thas combo deck, uh, with Kael'thas at the top end and Barnes and trying to OTK this guy. Um, we'll see if the deck can perform. Uh, at the level it's been performing for me, um, which is a very high level. Uh, we, we do need to find the Kael'thas, though. So we're looking for Kael'thas. Uh, we didn't find it. I think we're full mulliganing here. These are decent cards. The Innervate is not Kael'thas, though. So we're looking for, for Kael'thas. We're looking for Barnes. Um, I will sometimes keep a UI. I'm not sure if that's correct, um, because you, you really want to have fuel once you find Kael'thas and Barnes. Um, but that's just like a, an idiosyncratic thing I do. I think most people would just mulligan for Kael'thas and Barnes. Um, as I'm learning the deck, though, I have found that sometimes I flood out. Like, I have no uh, no payoffs for the uh, the turn that I do. You know, I get Kael'thas down or I get Barnes into Kael'thas and then I have nothing to do. So I'd much rather, ha you know, have a UI or have a Nourish alongside Kael'thas and Barnes. Now, if I get Kael'thas or Barnes, I'm always keeping UI. I'd probably keep some zero drops. But so, since we're looking for the barnes Kael'thas stuff, um, it just makes more sense to do it this way. I'm going to go with a Nourish next turn. I could play Barnes, but it's not guaranteed that I have a, uh, a good turn with it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go nourish for draw. I think I could go nourish for mana because that makes the iron bark active next turn. But 
Okay, yeah. We're gonna do this. Nourish for mana. This makes this free. So next turn I'm going Barnes, Moonfire, Ironbark, UI, and probably winning the game on turn five. Um, so that's pretty powerful. If I draw the Kael'thas, I have to play... Kael'thas, obviously I can't play Barnes, but if we don't draw Kael'thas, we have three additional mana on top of what we have... Uh, what we gain from the, you know, Lightning Bloom and Innervate we might draw. So watch this. We have three mana left over. We just need to find zero cost stuff. Okay, we're chilling. Okay, that's a Starfire. We do this face. We need to find a zero cost. Did we find a zero cost? Looks like we found um, Bio Project. So that's the deck winning on turn five. Um, that was a cool game. We got there. So, for the record, I think Claw and Pounce were good in this matchup, even though um, we won without them, without having to attack with our face. Because sometimes you don't draw the swipe and you don't draw the Moonfire. I mean, the yeah, the Moonfire, and you don't draw the Starfire. You don't draw UI. Like, that was a really high roll game, right? Sometimes you don't find Barnes, or you find Kael'thas and Barnes, and you can't play Barnes. Anyway, that's what the deck does at the uh, at peak performance. Um, I'm going to end this video, this, like, segment of the video, and I'm going to play another game, see if we can have a similar result. And, uh, and then I'll wrap up, uh, plug myself. I am on Twitch and uh, Twitter, as well as on YouTube. I uh, just... You guys should definitely check me out, um, but I'll get into that a little later on. But uh, but yeah, this deck is really fun. It's just the fun for me, not so much fun for the opponent, but it is what it is. All right, guys, uh, we're queuing in for another game with my Kael'thas combo deck. Uh, we won our first one pretty spectacularly. We had a turn five lethal. And uh, we're going in trying to have a similar result. We found Barnes on five. So uh, so that went well. Anyway, um, this deck is very powerful. And then very bad if you don't find the combo pieces. It's very good into Warlock because you don't need to full combo. You can like UI twice and they die sometimes. Uh, as I was saying in the last, uh, the last um, clip, the last part of this video, I was talking about how UI can be a keep. I think I keep UI on the coin without Kael'thas or Barnes, because I need something to do once I find the Kael'thas or the Barnes, right? Just having like cycled zero drops doesn't do very much. Or like Bog Beam or Iron Bark, if I'm bricking the, the UI draw, because UI is like the most powerful thing you can do um, with the Kael'thas, um, turn, you know, like, once you find Kael'thas and you play a free UI, that's the most powerful spell in the deck to play. I did try out, um, an Oaken Summons package with spell damage stuff, but it doesn't feel necessary. I, I think this is probably close to the list I would run if I was trying to run an optimized version of this deck. Um, we have all the zero drops that are available to us except in Big In. Which makes sense because we don't really want to play in big and it's a dead draw until we find Kael'thas and even then we don't end up needing it. It doesn't do anything. It's just a, an activator for Kael'thas. Uh, we found UI number two. That's unfortunate. How are we going to do this? I can Bog Beam Moonfire because we have enough zero cost stuff that if we find Kael'thas we can, we can pop off. Could go solar uh, claw. I think I like that. Solar claw clears out the hand in case we do top deck uh, the card, and then it makes it so you can't like go crazy with the the gold Sharon They run um, battleground battlemaster, so 
it's not that turn yet, but if I don't deal with the 5-6, it scales, right? He gets, like, chip damage every turn. Mountain Giant's a problem. You could run, um... I don't think he would do it, but you could run, um... Naturalize in this deck to deal with big threats from, like, even lock. If you're seeing a lot of even lock... I haven't been seeing a lot of even lock. Like, a, not enough that it's worth running naturalize anyway we don't find uh barns or kalthos we're dead and if we do we win a lot of the time um kalthos off the top nope uh battleground battlemaster we're dead to the battlemaster this sucks so this is sort of an example of how the deck can uh, can falter we're just going to assume that we're dead and hope that we're not i could uh i could starfire we don't have enough I could Starfire and Pounce and Moonfire, but then we're not able to do the Kalthos turn when we get it. We bricked. It is what it is. Dead to um, Battleground Battlemaster. Not quite dead to Dark Bomb, but they usually run two Battlemasters if they're running two ofs, and he's got two Mountain Giants. So, Oh well. I do also need to top deck Kalthos if I want to win. So that was a reason to maybe cast Starfire. That's no fun. Oh well. That game was rough. All right, guys, I'm queuing in for a third game. I've won one and lost one so far. So uh, this is our our chance for redemption. Um, the, uh, the deck is pretty consistent. If you find the card to to enable the, the combo, if you find the Kalthos or you find the, the Barnes, it's very consistent. Um, but you do need to find Kalthos or Barnes. We found Barnes, but no... Um, no Kalthos, but that's good because we want Kalthos in the deck to get Barnes to copy the, the Kalthos. So since we got Barnes, I'm gonna full keep this hand. Even though the Starfire is not that good, I don't wanna get I don't wanna see Kalthos, right? We wanna go Barnes on five and then win. Any mana ramp we can win earlier than turn five, and currently if we find a, a zero cost card, we win on five. A lot of the time. Finding UI would also probably be a win, because we could draw 5 on turn 5. Here come Nourish. Again, I'm just going to, like, wait. This is a game where we wait until turn 5, and if we get lucky and find another 0 cost, we we are in a good spot. We would play Barnes either way, because Kalthos um, would still be in the deck. Barnes is only a copy of the minion, so we can do, like, a second uh, OTK turn if we need to. Found Swipe, that's not bad. It's not great though. I think I'm gonna send it face. Yeah, face seems right. Because we're trying to we're trying to Barnes lethal two turns from now. Or even even next turn if we get lightning bloom. I would I would go in, I think. So we're gonna swipe the the three three if we get a playable. Nope, no playables. I meant we were going to um, Solar Swipe if we got a Lightning Bloom. I misspoke. So, uh, we're, we're just kind of waiting, biding our time. We need to find a uh, zero cost or another one cost to be able to pop off with uh, Kael'thas ASAP. So I might play Nourish for draw, even though we could draw Kael'thas. Actually, if we draw Kael'thas, um, we just play Kael'thas naturally on turn six. So... I think I'm a little bit afraid of his board. Okay, Biology Project lets us win the game. Okay, Biology Project first. Pounce. Barnes. And draw three. See if we get a zero cost. We can get a zero cost. Did we actually not? Oh, we did. We did get a zero cost. Cool. So we have seven mana. This is going to be an APM turn if I'm not fast enough. It's unfortunate. Get UI. Perfect. 
Second UI, perfect. Come on, give me the cards. It's hard to grab the cards, unfortunately. I had it without the uh, the last Starfire, but there's how you play this deck. You draw Barnes like God Gamers, and then you play the whole deck. You have three cards left in the deck. Um, I, I certainly could have APM'd that a little bit better. Um, when I get more uh, acclimated to the deck, if I play it a lot more, which I think I'm going to, uh, I'll be able to finesse grabbing the cards but i was having some trouble grabbing like a couple of the targeted spells like the iron bark and the bog beam as the you know ui was drawing the cards it was difficult to grab the new cards and play them as they were coming into the hand which is a big a big deal i lost like 10 seconds trying to grab those cards anyway uh that's the deck i hope you guys enjoyed um do a quick wrap up uh, and i'll send you guys on your way All right, guys, uh, so this is the deck again. If you guys want to copy the code, it'll be in the description to the YouTube video. Uh, make sure you follow me on on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash glare, uh, and on Twitter, where I'm uh, at glare underscore HS. Obviously, you found this YouTube video. If you found it um, and don't know what my YouTube is, it's glare HS, but you know that. Uh, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I will be back next week. I do stream every night, but I mean, I'll be back with a new YouTube video next week. I stream every night. Um, I'm going to be doing, uh, I believe a full set review or at least a, a sort of examination of the cards that my brother and I think are going to be really good in the new set in the next few days once that's all released. And, uh, yeah, this deck is super fun. I highly recommend that you play it. Just don't cue into me because it sucks to lose to the deck. Has sort of the feeling of a uh, Togwaggle as a Lena deck, for me anyway, playing against this kind of deck. I lost to somebody playing it, and it's just like, oh, man, can't, can't, can't do your turn, right? You just lose. It's like a, it's a, not a prison deck, but it's a deck where if you get the combo, you don't lose. Um, which is cool. I mean, I find this deck to be really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay and that you'll you'll try the deck out for yourselves um if you want to make adjustments uh the weakest cards feel like um probably iron bark it's only in there for uh the kelthos turn and bog beam is good though like the, the you want to have enough free spells bog beam feels really good into anything aggressive so even playing it for three if you don't get to seven mana can feel pretty good but nourish on four like coin nourish on four into um Kael'thas turn with Bog Beam and Iron Bark can feel really good. But yeah, Iron Bark is probably the weakest. Claw feels pretty weak. Um, you can't drop any one drop, any zero drops, I mean. You probably want the Biology Project, although if you don't want to ramp your opponent, maybe you don't run the Bio Project. It's really good on the combo turn, though. I can see cutting Starfire, but it means you don't have the full lethal combo, because the combo is 30 damage without any... Uh, any buffs to the the damage right like, you know you don't need spell damage right it's ui is five plus five plus starfire is five plus five plus uh swipe is eight four plus four and then moonfire is two so i find you don't need you don't need living roots i think the the deck does fine without living roots because you draw all the way through it sorry i'm rambling a little bit i realized that but um i'm glad you guys stuck around for the whole video i'll put a uh a sort of what do they call it? A, a title page or something? Not a title page. An end screen where I'll, I'll have my uh, my Twitch and uh, Twitter information. You guys should check those out. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Gaming with Glare. Thanks for hanging out.